In today's programme, we're zooming in on microscopic bugs. Bug vision will reveal where they live near you. We catch up with some useful bugs in yoghurt. Take a trip to the dentist. And a journey down the toilet on Science Tube. All around us, there are millions of very small bugs. A miniature world that can only be seen under a powerful microscope. These bugs have been magnified hundreds of times so that we can see them. They don't just dance in rubbish and drains, they're dancing on you now, on your skin, in between your teeth, in your gut and up your nose. Some are very useful, we need them to live. And some are bad, like germs. Now we know we've got millions of tiny harmful bugs around us and there are some hot spots in the day that perhaps we should give a bit more thought to. However careful you are with the toilet paper, some bugs still get onto your hands. Did you know that flushing a toilet with the lid up causes a spray of bugs that can go two metres or more from the toilet? Nice one, Will. Ah. He's missed the washing bit. There'll be more than a few bugs on these hands. Looks like Sam and Will share everything. Mmm, shame they're going to buy a sandwich. Oh, and more of a shame they've forgotten their helmets. Make sure you wear yours for skateboarding. So the floor in the shop is spotlessly clean about the pavement. Mrs Buns wouldn't think about making a sandwich without washing her hands with soap and drying them to get rid of all the harmful bugs. Oh no, what's coming into the bug-free shop? Sausage. Two bug-free sandwiches, but not two bug-free boys. I wonder if he would be quite so keen to eat with those hands if he could see the bugs on them. Let's go into bug vision and see just what's on Will's hands.
Now Will's got bug vision evidence, I think he'll be washing his hands next time he uses the toilet. Yogurt's made by adding bugs to milk. Now don't worry, because these are not the kind of bugs that make you sick. Quite the opposite. These are good bugs. But to make good yoghurt, any sick-making bad bugs must be got rid of. The raw material for yoghurt is milk delivered in tankers. However clean the milk in the tanker, there could be a few bad bugs in the milk when it arrives at the factory. So the bug hit squad gets to work. Heating the milk to nearly boiling for five minutes inside these extremely clean pipes kills off all the bugs in the milk. Now the yoghurt scientist needs to add the good bacteria. They're kept frozen and dried until they're needed. There are millions of bacteria in each clump and enough clumps here to make thousands of pots of yoghurt. Milk naturally contains a type of sugar called lactose. Scientists know that certain bacteria love to eat this sugar. Let's take a closer look. Two sorts of good bacteria go into the yoghurt. Rod-like lactobacilli and round streptococci. As they live inside the milk, they multiply and multiply but also release tangy lactic acid. The acid gives yoghurt its taste. This acid thickens the yoghurt. Yoghurt scientists know that it will taste perfect when the acid level is just right. So they measure the acid level, called the pH level. When it's 4.45, the good bugs have multiplied and released just enough tangy acid to make the perfect yoghurt. To keep it perfect, you want no more bacteria. To stop them multiplying, the yoghurt's put through a high-tech fridge and very quickly cooled. Now all that needs to be done is to add some fruit. Yum yum, strawberry. Still fridge cool, the yoghurt's put into pots. It's ready to go to a shop near you. Ever looked closely into your mouth? Very, very closely? No? Well, you're in for a big surprise. Or should that be lots of very small surprises? And that chair for me. That's lovely. Your mouth's full of bugs, some of them helpful, and some of them sitting ready to eat away at your teeth. Dentist Vicky is going on a bug hunt in Isabel's mouth. She's using a mouthwash dye that shows up where Isabel's got bugs. The pink shows where plaque, a sticky film of bacteria, has formed since she last brushed her teeth. So we know which bit she's not been brushing properly. The bacteria in plaque produces acid that eat away at your teeth. Hmm. Isabel's getting rid of most of the plaque with her toothbrush, but could do better. Vicky's using a mini camera to get a better look at the back teeth. There's a little bit of redness around the gum edge there. That's just an area that you're missing a little bit with the toothbrush, so that's an area that we need to get a little bit better. What I'm going to do now is just have a look, see if you've got any bacteria in the mouth. So what I'm going to do is just to pop this little brush in between the teeth to see if we can get a plaque sample and have a look, OK? So, let's take a really close look at Isabel's plaque under the microscope. 
These are bacteria from the plaque found in Isabel's mouth. These clumps are sugar-eating bacteria. That might sound good, but as they eat sugar, they release acid and this attacks our teeth and gums. And the ones moving about love to eat you. Bone-eating bacteria. It's a full-on acid attack. What I'm going to do now is just go over toothbrushing instruction with you so we can kill these and stop them from doing you any harm. Okay. Come around to the toothbrush there. So, next time you're in your bathroom, have an extra special brush and say goodbye to some unwelcome bug visitors in your mouth. Poo! One flush and it's gone. But what happens to it? It ends up here. A sewage treatment works. This treatment works has poo and we arriving from the whole of the city of Coventry. It's not just poo and we that arrives, but washing machine water, bath and shower water, and waste water from factories. The first part of the process is to get rid of stuff like toilet paper. It gets squeezed and comes out looking like a sausage. But have you ever wondered what happens if you don't chew your food? Well, here's the sweet corn. It comes out the other end. The rest of the sewage flows on, and by this stage, the poo's gone into a mush. It's a poo smoothie. With the heavy poo gone, here's what's left. But would you drink it? Fortunately, some bugs think this is the best drink out. They're kept in this tank. And by eating the poo, they clean the water. These bugs need oxygen from the air to live. If the sewage went into the rivers now, the bugs would use up so much oxygen in the water that plants and fish in the rivers would die. The water would be pretty stinky too. So the sewage works help the bugs to live by pumping air with its life-giving oxygen out of underwater pipes into these tanks. That explains the bubbles. As the bugs grow, they form clumps. In this final tank, the bugs sink to the bottom. Now the water flows back into the river. It's a wonderful piece of recycling. The water that went down the toilet, through the sewage works, into the river, is treated and could come out of your tap to drink again.